And what we find is that Jesus and his disciples are preparing for the Passover. And Jesus and his disciples are sitting around the table. They're eating food. They're having a good time. They're hanging out. And then all of a sudden, the story changes. The story begins to shift. Jesus gets up from his table. He walks over. He takes off his outer garments. He takes off his outer robe. Jesus goes and he grabs a towel. He grabs a basin. And then he grabs a jug of water. And then Jesus walks back to the table. And he kneels down in front of James. And the whole time they're looking at this, they're looking and they're watching Jesus and they're thinking, no, no, there's no way. There's no way he's about to do this. See, what's about to happen is Jesus is about to wash the disciples' feet. And what you find with foot washing is that this was not something for the King of Kings or the Lord of Lords to do. This was the job for the lowest servant in the house. And at the time they come in, they'd already had dinner. This should have happened as soon as they walked in. Somebody should have taken the place of this servant to wash their feet. And here sits James, he's like, what do I do? You see, nobody had taken the time. Nobody had done that. Nobody had taken the place of that servant to wash the feet. And you can imagine the anxiety that James is feeling right now. It's like, guys, help me out. What, do, what is going on? What are we doing? What is he doing? Imagine right now if does said, all right, everybody, let's take off our feet or take off our feet. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? You show me how you do that. And I'll, oh my gosh. Take off your shoes, take off your shoes. Automatically, everybody's anxiety went through the roof because feet are nasty. Could you imagine the smell if everybody's like, okay, sounds good, let's do it, let's do it. And we're not even talking about shoes and socks here. We're talking about Chaco feet. You know what I'm talking about, Chaco. It's just a bunch of sandals, dirt, dust. They smell too, it's incredible, it's all so bad. We got James with his chalkio feet sitting here and Jesus is about to wash them. There's an extreme anxiety that runs up because this is not what Jesus is supposed to do. This is not something that the King of Kings should do. But he sits down before James and he grabs the water. He pours them over his feet. He takes the towel, begins to clean them. Take the mud, the dust, waste all off of his feet. James is still just, I don't know what to say. And then he gets to Peter and Peter's like, Lord, you ain't washing my feet. There's no way you're washing my feet. That's what we hope we would have responded like, right? And Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, You don't belong to me. And then Peter says, Lord, wash me completely. Pour the whole thing over my head and scrub me clean. It's profound though, isn't it? Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, washes Peter's feet. You see, the whole time he's taken taken the type of real love and he's just expressed it. He chose to grab a towel. He chose to get the water in the jug. He chose to bend down, to take the the lowest position in the room as the servant. He chose all of this on his free will. He fully and completely gave himself to them in this way. Sacrificed his status, sacrificed what others would believe, sacrificed what others would think. He didn't care. And then here's where it gets even more profound. He goes to the next person at the table. And the next person at the table is Judas. 
and he sits before Judas. And at this point, he's already, he's already spoken to the group that one among you is not clean. One among you, your heart is not right. He already knew what Judas was about to do. He already knew it. He knew that he would betray him. He knew that he would be the one. But what'd he do? He grabbed some water, took the towel, and he cleaned him. He washed his feet. That's unconditional. That's unconditional love at its purest form. Knowing that the man who was going to betray you knowing that the man that was gonna lead you to the cross was sitting before you and you grab a towel, you grab a water and you wash his feet. You make him clean, you serve him. This is profound. This is why real love is so difficult. But Jesus's life is the example of what real love is.